It's YouTube Wednesday! Okay, I need a top hat that goes over a masked character. It's a custom character that we're doing for a haunted attraction. And I want to measure my head around, because this is what would fit me. In case you're wondering, my head is right at 24 inches. I'm gonna go larger than that because there's gonna be a mask on the head also. I'm gonna cut all the parts out of five millimeter EVA foam and I want the top hat to also have a taper so that the top of the hat is wider than the bottom. Like that, but not as extreme as that, only a little bit. Those are hard to draw upside down. This measurement down here, the base, is gonna be a little larger than around my head. I'll put that at 26. We'll do this one at something like 28, and we're doing it a foot tall. Most of this EVA only comes 18 inches. Uh, you buy them at Hobby Lobby. They're 12 by 18. So I'm gonna do it in four pieces. 26 divided by four equals 6.5. 28 divided by four is seven. All right, so I'm gonna have four pieces of foam that are 6.5 inches, 12 inches tall, and then seven inches up at the top. I'm gonna to go cut those out. Okay, I have my pieces of foam. All that math is accurate, except I changed the math and did five pieces instead of four because of the size of foam that I had. I need five of these and I cut six for safety. I'm putting all the large sides together and all of these will get glued together edge to edge with contact cement. Um, the contact cement has to be dry before I put it together. So I'm gonna let these sit about 10 minutes and I'll start putting it together. All right, here are my pieces. I'm gonna warm them up a little bit with a heat gun. I'm gonna use the flatness of the table to make sure that my edges line up. One seam, I have a few more to go. The heating it up makes it softer, makes it more pliable, and that allows it to uh, flex a little more. And I knew once I made this connection, I'd be able to make this connection. And I want them to go round as opposed to just putting pressure on those seams. little big for me, which is what I want. This will sit on a mask just fine. We'll cut a strip of EVA for the inside. Lower, upper. This is gonna go inside and reinforce all those seams in the back. So it's not just a butt joint. So there is more surface area holding these together. Most glues are successful because of surface area. The lower ring will also work as a stop in case the hat is too big. Maybe their head's not as big as mine. It doesn't fill up the mask. Well, that ring inside about an inch up will actually keep that hat from falling down much further. See, I'm not a perfect circle right now. That's because there's different stress on this. And if I warm it up, I can even out that stress. Think about a curve and how a curve works. The outside has to stretch the most. I'm gonna let these guys dry, about five or six minutes. Okay, so it's always gonna be less expensive to buy the top hat, except it's very hard to find a top hat that fits over top of a mask. So that's why it kind of had to be done this way. See, I'm kind of flattening out that section, and then I am binding it together with this other glue piece. But that rounded it out quite nicely. You need to figure out how big you want your brim to be. I decided on a 15 inch circle. That's 15 inches from here to here. And I'm gonna center it. It has to be center-ish, doesn't have to be perfect. OK, 
cutting a hole just big enough for my hand so I can reach up in there and help keep the hat on the line. I'll cut the rest of this center out after it's glued together. 10 more minutes. All right, contact cement's dry. A little bit of warmth. Now I'm gonna cut this out. And I just kinda cut a spiral to give myself more and more room. I'm getting closer and closer to the edge. Just a nice sharp razor knife. I have a nice top hat. Flares up just a little bit. Okay. Hi, uh, Stacy, your friendly neighborhood suggestion Harpy here at Stilpy Studios. And today we're gonna to be covering an EVA foam top hat in fabric. Step one is I need to put a top on it. So I've got it lined up on my EVA foam. I'm gonna trace the inside to make sure I've got my interior diameter. So I've got that traced out. I mark right here to uh, say where I need to line it up when I glue it in. Take it away and cut it out. And I can trim this down a little bit more if I need to, if it's not gonna fit exactly. I'm not worried too much because it's gonna be covered with fabric. I'm gonna coat it with contact cement. I'm gonna coat this outside edge. The trick is to let it dry all the way before you line it up. Once it's no longer tacky, you'll get a really solid bond. I'm using the heat gun pretty sparingly because I don't wanna boil my glue and I don't wanna re-loosen any of the previously contact cemented bonds on this. If you hit it really hard with a heat gun, it will do both of those things. And it will not make your job any easier. And there you go, we're lined up. Now we have a top. So now let's move on to fabric. I'm gonna take some measurements really quickly. So we've got 27 and a half inches around the bottom. Okay, round it up to 28 on the top because so the covering for it is not going to be super flush to the sides of this. It's gonna be a little bunchy. Top and bottom, we're just gonna trace it onto the fabric. We're gonna be using our beautiful purple scrunchie. And when I cut this out, I'm gonna leave myself maybe a half an inch of seam allowance. We're gonna do the same thing for the bottom, and I'm gonna get some weights to hold this down to make sure that I'm getting a flat connection. So now we're just gonna trace this as well. And we're actually gonna do this twice and sandwich it in the middle. And this has got a little bit of stretch to it on the diagonal, so. Now we have our top brim, bottom brim. We'll cut the centers out of those in a second. There's our top. So we know that our top is slightly larger than our base here. So if we trace our top onto the center of our base, we will have a line that is slightly larger than our bottom circumference. And we'll actually want it even a little bit longer than that, but this is a good place to start. And we're gonna trace that. And we're actually gonna make this a little bit smaller so we have enough room to flip that inside. I'm just gonna freehand this. All of this is gonna be on the inside so if it's a little sketchy, no one cares. So we're gonna cut this out and we're gonna leave ourselves some tabs that don't quite go all the way to the edge. On one side of this, those are going to flip onto the interior and we'll glue them down. And on the other side, they're gonna flip up onto the exterior and they'll get covered by the sheath of the hat. There's our hole. And I'm using this one to copy that same hole onto this one. A little under an inch there. So I'll just go ahead and mark a couple of those. Just like that, we're gonna trim those all the way around. And now we have our tabs. Now we do the other side. I'm cheating them a little short because I can always make it longer, but if it needs to be shorter, that's harder to wrangle. All right, and now we have two. These will get sewn together. Also, this will go on the top. And now I'm going to measure out my fabric for this. Lengthwise, 11 inches. And we want it to have some scrunch. Two inches, that's 12 inches. So we've got 27 and a half on the bottom. Probably just round that up to 28. 
28 on the top, 12 inches long. Use a quilting square. And actually, we're going to go ahead and make that 12 and a quarter, so I've got some seam allowance. And now we have all our pieces cut out. So we're going to move to the sewing machine. Start with the, uh, the brim. So we've got that lined up, with our edges together and our right sides together. We're going to clip it. I like clips slightly more than I like pins, although there's some things that pins are better for. These are little sewing clips and they work really well. And they have one flat side, so they sit evenly on your table. I'm staying pretty close to my original traced edge there because I want this to lay pretty flush on the outside. And then we're gonna turn it inside out. Now you have a big purple donut. We're gonna see if we can flip this over the edge. Since it's pretty flexible EVA, shouldn't give us too much grief and should be able to do it without too much distortion. And there we go. We're all the way in. You can see there we've got room to glue your tabs down on the inside. And then on the outside, all of our tabs sticking up, that'll get hid by the sleeve of the cover. So we're gonna set that aside and make our sleeve. So we've got our long piece here and we opted for not making it any smaller on one end. I am just gonna sew it. So now we have our sleeve. This one I am going to clip our top into our sleeve. So because this is a little bit larger than our sleeve here, um, I'm gonna run a gathering stitch around the outside of this and pull it down some. On a standard home machine, this will be pretty much the same to do a gathering stitch. You're gonna increase your stitch length as long as it will go. On a home machine, you also maybe reduce your tension a little bit. I'm not gonna touch the tension on this. Now this is some pretty heavy duty thread, so I'm probably only going to do one. If you're using standard thread, um, you'd run two, two lines of stitches together so it won't break. And then the fabric will slide along those stitches. I'll show you here in a sec. Give myself lots of tail to have room to grab onto. And just inside my line here, I'm going to run a long stitch all the way around. So plenty of tail on this side as well. Find your bobbin thread here, hold on to it and pull and it gathers that in. I don't need much. All about making adjustments. So now that we've got that fullness distributed all the way around the edge, we pin again. I'm gonna start on one edge, then I'm gonna go around to the opposite side. Here's my other half. Evenly spread it out through the whole thing. Okay, now we have that fullness distributed around the entire thing and it fits, so we're gonna sew it in. I'm straightening this out underneath as I go to make sure it doesn't get bunched. Turn this inside out. We have a, a hat sleeve. So we're gonna try it on our hat. Do I currently have a film? Just test fitting this. It looks like it's gonna fit, and it looks like a slouchy top hat. So we've got all our edges notched and trimmed, and we're gonna glue down these edges. We're gonna start gluing down our tabs. So I've got a really flexible hot glue here down to a fairly low temperature. I'm just going to apply a little bit to this tab, fold it in, and then we'll be applying hair on the inside later. We're gonna rotate it around to the other side, a little bit of hot glue, fold it in. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. Now that we've got all that tension pretty evenly distributed, you can just go around and fill in the rest. Now we are all attached on the inside. We're gonna do the same thing on the outside. Pressing it down to make sure that we're flush at the bottom of the hat. All right, we've got our top and bottom sides of this glued on. We've got our sleeve put on and we've scrunched it to where we like it. So now I'm just gonna go around and tack this at the bottom with hot glue. Roll that edge back and just give it a little hot glue. So we've got our hat all covered, so we're gonna move on to our band. <laughs> So basically we're going to make a, a big piece of bias tape. We've measured our bottom at like 29 inches. So we're gonna make this a little bit longer. We'll do 30. So we're gonna go for our 
30 inches here, straight it down, and we go again. I'm gonna cut that out, square up our ends, and we're gonna glue it on our hat. First, we're gonna lay down our bottom edge with hot glue. This again is a very flexible hot glue. I'm just gonna fold that up. It gives us one clean, pretty edge on the bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. These are the very flexible hot glue sticks that we get from glue-sticks, S-T-I-X, hyphen online.com. So now we've got our flexible bias, and we're gonna glue it on. Lining that up with my seam in the back. Now we've come to our overlap. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit so we can tuck it under. We are hat banded. So now we have our hat totally finished, but it is entirely too pretty. So we are going to distress this. Let's get some spray paint. So we've got our spray paint, espresso brown, smoky beige, flat black. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with this espresso brown and we're gonna knock down the shine. We still want it to be purple. We just want it to be less sparkly purple. So we're gonna go in with our flat black and darken this up a little bit in some places. When you're distressing, you definitely wanna look at places that a thing would naturally acquire wear. On a hat, a place where you're gonna have a lot of wear is around the brim where you touch it. So we're darkening that up. And we're gonna go in with that smoky beige and just give it a dusting directionally. So we've got some good wrinkles in this. I wanna highlight those. So now our hat is much more like it uh, crawled out of a graveyard. A little distressed, we're gonna let that dry. The last step in this hat is it gets some hair to blend in with this mask. I am using eight inch artificial hair for hair weave. You can buy it on Amazon. I'm using 100% silicone caulking to attach it. And this mask is on a sock mask. It has stretch. So I have to apply it in little pieces in order for there to be stretch in between all of the pieces. I have 30 minutes to do this and then I have to leave for the airport to get to MHC. How long should you take to hair a mask? Most people, about two hours. Because the silicone is not as stretchy as the fabric. So I am using blank spaces where the hair is not in order to make up and allow the stretch to come from two places. And I want to push it in. I want to make sure it goes in between the fibers of the artificial hair. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm not worried about how the top edge looks because the next layer of hair covers that. I worry that it's securely fashioned. And I'll get this much stretch on both each side from that fabric. See how this one is hiding the top edge of those? The hat's gonna come down here, so I have the hair up to here. That is the mask, and now I'm gonna do the hat. The hat, I'm gonna use hot glue because it grabs the fibers well and it binds into the fabric well. This is the back of the hat, identified by where the hat band meets in the back. So this is the front of the hat. So I want hair to go about the halfway point, a little less, here to here. Two runs of this hair is pretty full, and that's gonna be enough to blend in with the hair in the back of the head. I wanna make sure I'm even, so I'm attaching the middle first. See, this is kind of a yellow glue stick. This is a resin impregnated glue stick, and my heat setting is very high. So it'll open up the pores of the foam with the heat, and then it's liquid enough to go into those pores. So now I have glue coming up through the fibers of the hair. I'm gonna run a little bead of glue along the top to bind all those together. And then I've got like a, a comb holding it in on both sides. That has to cool, that has to dry, mask is ready.
Go make stuff. Go make stuff. It's time for some Patreon shout outs. A special thank you to the following, Brandon Nelson and Thomas Kaufman. If you would like to support our channel, head on over to our Patreon. Link in the description below. All our supporters have access to more behind the scenes moments that are not available anywhere else. As always, make sure you subscribe and go make stuff.